All right, you guys, J Nell's voice here again. I thought that I would be coming to you guys with my temporary crown, but nope, not yet. I have to get it sent away and approved before they could do it and all of this mess. And I'm now I'm on pins and needles hoping I don't have to come out the pocket $3,000 because I have to get two new crowns and a root canal. So, uh, yeah. So I have at least more two weeks. We, uh, I have at least two more weeks of being toothless. And I know people got it worse than me. I'm trying not to complain. I'm actually doing pretty well. I've been looking inside. I've been working out. I've been eating better. But when I smile, I look like I'm struggling, y'all. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm missing a tooth in the front of my mouth. Okay. Just let me, let me complain a little bit. All right. But that's not why I'm here. I am here to talk about the uh, awesome event that took place. Uh, what is today? Monday? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm late. The awesome event that took place uh, Saturday from Jacksonville, Florida, UFC 249. It was an incredible event. The entire event was stacked from top to bottom. Please go check out uh, the whole card. If you haven't seen it, check out the entire card. Now, I hope you guys follow me on my other social media platforms because I told you that I would probably do more predictions the day of the fight, which I did. I do two two predictions from the under the prelim. So I actually made seven predictions and it wasn't the best night for me, y'all. I got three out of seven. <laughs> but in my opinion, I actually think I should have got four. But let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, first up, uh, I chose Michelle Watterson to beat Carla Esparza. She did not. I, and I did that again on my Instagram and my Twitter page. Again, got to follow me everywhere. She did not. And I disagree. It was a split decision in favor of the Cookie Monster. I actually do think it was a very close fight. The first round, I do understand how it could have gone either way. But I don't think uh, Carla getting a 30-second takedown and only landing one elbow, only throwing one elbow, literally. And her losing, in my opinion, the stand-up game. No, she didn't lose it drastically. But I I just simply feel that Michelle started first and she won the stand-up game and that's where most of the first round took place so I feel like uh, Michelle won the first round that she even more so won the second round that Carla won the third so I think uh, uh, two out of three for Michelle again Carla won the fight I'm not like too upset about it but I do disagree let me know if you agree if not uh why if so why let's moving forward who would you like Carla Esparza to fight next this is actually a very big win for her so who would you like to fight next now next up I also on the undercard the main event of the undercards I chose uh Anthony Pettis to beat Donald Cerrone this went all uh, three rounds I don't believe it was unanimous someone let me know if it was unanimous no I don't think it was but I do agree however this was a very close fight uh um, I, um, when Donald Cerrone was able to land the takedowns, that was in the second round. I believe that was the round that he definitely won. I think that um, Anthony just happened to hit harder. He had more snap on his punches. He definitely did more damage. And it just seems like um, he dictated the pace a little bit more. It just seems like he was the one that was more grounded. It just He just seemed like he was the sharper fighter but it was a very close fight but good win for Anthony Pettis would you like to fight who would you like to see him fight next now on to, to the main card my first pick I did not get this pick I chose Jorgen DeCastro to beat um uh, Greg Hardy he did not and this went all three rounds in favor of Ed Hardy I totally Ed Hardy I keep I keep calling him Ed Hardy he does not look like those ugly ass clothes okay <laughs> so I totally agree uh, Jorgen, I believe, broke his foot or broke a toe. Someone let me know what happened there. He definitely injured himself even after the fight was stopped. Or not, excuse me, even after the fight was over. He immediately said, my foot is hurt. So it hampered him. Some fighters can move past it. They can break a hand and still throw it. It doesn't bother him. But as soon as the injury happened, I believe it was in the second round, it completely threw Jorgen off his game. That's not to take anything away from Greg Hardy, who noticed that uh, there was something wrong with him, who did press the pace, who did move forward, who did try to put together some combinations, who is in Improving. Who has some good kicks? He had some nice kicks in this fight. He is improving at a very rapid pace. He's only been there for three years. He's doing, he's doing well. He's doing well. Who would you like to see Ed, Ed Hardy? Who would you like to see Greg Hardy fight next? Next up, I did not get this pick either. I chose um, Jeremy Stevens to beat Calvin Cutar. Um, he did not. And I was very nervous about this pick. But when Jeremy Stevens came in five pounds overweight, it actually made me stick with the pick because I was un- I didn't know if Calvin would be able to handle the power and since Jeremy came in so heavy and he didn't look like Skeletor like he didn't have any problems making the weight because he basically didn't cut I was thinking I might have a problem there but Calvin looks good 
first round was extremely close. Calvin was a bit faster. He had a bit more uh, on his body movement. Of course, Jeremy was trying to take his head off, and he did clock him a few times, and he did stun him, but Calvin has a better chin than I thought. He was able to get through it. He looked strong the whole time, and in the second round, he actually ended it, uh, landing an elbow, standing elbow, right elbow that knocked Jeremy down to the ground. Then he followed up with some shots and a left elbow that basically was the beginning of the end, and the ref stopped the fight. Great, fantastic win for Calvin uh, Cutter. Who would you like to see him fight next? Next up, the first of the two title fights. And still, I got this pick. The UFC Bantamweight Champion, Mr. Henry Triple C Cejudo. He retained his belt against Dominic the Dominator Cruz. Now, this ended in the second round. Uh, a little bit of controversy. Let's talk about it, though. Uh, he Now, I took pleasure in that my analysis was correct. I said, Henry Cejudo, you're going to have to chop down that lead leg. And he went after it immediately and immediately started to hamper the movement of Dominic Cruz. Um, then he started to come in and work in with his punches. Dominic was landing some shots as well. Uh, this The ending came here in the second round where uh, uh, he was able to come in, land a shot, drop um, a land a punch that dropped Dominic to his knees. He started to swarm with some punches. Now, Okay, so here's the controversy. So uh, he did not knock Dominic Cruz out, but he did land about 11 shots in a row unanswered. Now, I don't know what the ref told him backstage. We know the refs all have their rules. They say, hey, if you scream out in pain, I'm going to stop the fight. If I see something's broke, like with the Tim Silva fight where he broke his arm and didn't even know it, I'm going to stop the fight. So they say, if you don't fight back, if you don't follow my commands, I'm going to stop the fight. So I don't know what the ref said. Dominic Cruz said that he told the ref that he should let him take damage Dominic you don't tell the ref what to do if it was up to the fighters y'all would die in there Dominic okay uh, I know you're a smarter uh, uh, smarter fighter and all of that and you know yourself well but you don't get to tell the ref what to do so the ref in my opinion stopped it due to the unanswered shots but Dominic was in the process of standing up he was <sighs> it just the, as soon as the ref got there is when he got to that knee. If the ref would have hesitated, he probably wouldn't have stopped it. A different ref would have let it go. Again, you guys let me know what you thought about the end of the fight. Either way, Henry kept his bell, and Henry decided to retire, y'all. So if he truly did retire, thank you for everything that you've given to us in your entire combat sports career. That's, of course, your wrestling and all of the many titles that you have. Um... If you're just trying to get more money, which I suspect because you've been saying going in this whole time, you need to get paid, then pay the man. Pay the man. He's talking about having kids and stuff like that. Who knows? You guys let me know. Do you think Henry's out for real? Do you think he just wants to get paid? Do you think he wants to take some time, maybe pop out some babies, come back in two years or so? He is 33 years old. You let me know what's happening with Henry Cejudo. What would you like, what would you like to happen for Henry Cejudo? All right. I got that pick. Next up, I did not get this pick. Oh, I chose Tony Ferguson to beat Justin Gaethje. He did not. Justin Gaethje put on a fantastic performance. And I'm not upset because Justin won. I'm upset because after like 19 years of waiting for Khabib versus Tony, we are not going to get that. But again, I guess there's closure, right? There's no more wishing and hoping. It is over. Okay, but let's talk about what we have here. Let's give it up to Mr. Justin Gaethje because he, and no one told me his nickname. Does he have a nickname? Is it 12 Gage? Is it 12 Gaethje? Anyway, Justin Gaethje put on a fantastic match. And again, I can take solace in the fact that my analysis was correct. In my prediction video, I said, Justin, you're going to tear apart that lead leg, hamper his movement, and then work your way with the shots. And that's exactly what he did. He was hitting Tony Ferguson with some power shots throughout this entire fight. It was stopped in the fifth round. It was amazing that Tony didn't go down faster than that. So he tore apart Tony's lead leg, tore it apart early. And then he boxed his way in smart, like throwing together some combinations. He had some head movement. He didn't just hold his head out there. And Tony, I told you, don't be willing to take these shots from Justin Gaethje. And you were, man. You were. There were even moments where you would take a shot and you kind of waited for him to counter and hit you back in the face. And I don't know why you did that. Either way, no man can really hold up to those type, that type of power against Justin Gaethje for long. And Justin Gaethje, I said your cardio would wane. It did not. Probably because you weren't taking any damage. It's a lot easier to hold your cardio when you're the one dishing out the beating rather than taking it. But either way, you had great cardio throughout the entire five rounds. At one point, Tony did try to go for like an Anari roll, but it was too little too late. He'd already been zapped and beat up. You're probably looking at the picture right now. Tony got beat up. He got beat up. <laughs> 
So, oh God. So we got a new in. Oh yeah, this is the interim. This is the interim uh, championship. So uh, Justin Gaethje is now the new interim championship, which is basically means he's going to get that next title shot against Khabib Nurmagomedov. Fantastic win for Justin Gaethje. Okay, so yeah, this ended in the fifth round. This the whole fight went the same way. Justin tearing apart that lead leg, working his way with the shots and busting up Tony's face and his body. Beating him up. Pretty much every round. The second round, Tony had landed a knockdown at the end of the round. Maybe you can give that second round to him, but that's about it, y'all. The first round was close, but I think Justin uh, kind of eked it out. So in the fifth round, Justin Gaethje's putting together those combinations. He's busting Tony up. It looks like he broke his nose either way. Uh, Tony takes a moment and he like starts shaking out his face. Well, again, I don't know what the refs told him backstage, but... You've never really done anything like that before, Tony. So Herb Dean, he knows you. He's refed you before. If they see you do things that are awkward, if you shout out in pain, if they do things that, if you do things that they, makes them think that you are injured, they're going to stop the fight. They have to protect you from yourself. So I'm not mad at the stoppage. Great win for Justin Gaethje, who took off the belt. He said, I don't want to take pictures with the belt. Joe said, why? He said, because it's not the real belt. Because it ain't the real belt. All right. Let me know how you guys did on all your picks. Any updates? Any injury updates for sure? Uh, how you feel about the saga of Tony and Khabib finally being over? And uh, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram where I told you I do my last minute picks, which I will definitely be doing for Wednesday's event, you guys. It won't be on YouTube. It will be on Twitter and Instagram. So be looking out for that. So I'm on Snapchat now. Subscribe, like, talk to me, take care, and goodbye. Oh my god, I can't believe I totally almost forgot a fight here. A fight that I got too. I chose Francis Ngannou to beat Jarzino Rosenstruck, and he did. He actually beat him in about 20 seconds, probably why I almost forgot it. Either way, Francis came at him like a wild man, y'all. Head straight up, arm swinging wildly. If Jarzino could have landed some shots down the middle, he could have clocked him, but he did not. Instead, Francis nearly took his head off, knocked him on the ground with a wild uh, right, landed a couple other shots, and knocked him all the way out, y'all. So who would you like to see Francis Ngannou? fight next okay again follow me on twitter and instagram where i will have predictions for wednesday's event subscribe like talk to me take care and goodbye